Static is out of control. <laughs> so listen, this is just a day in the life. We, we thought there's things going on at the dry slab today, so we're just gonna shoot and we're gonna capture some of the stuff that can happen. We got a pop-up call from Rex Tavares' sidekick. Hey, can you do a tranny for us? So, you know, we're gonna check it out. I, and I don't really know what you got out here, so let's see what it is first. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is from an Aston Martin V12 Vanquish. Uh, this was uh, the transmission that you get when they convert it to manual. Yeah. Uh, this one has had a little bit of an oopsie with a garage fire. Okay. Um, so I figured I'm, I'm selling it and the guy who's buying it knows the condition of it. Okay. He's going to rebuild it, but uh, I said, hey, we can probably have it dry iced. He's got the, the latest production version of the 410S, the big boy. Okay. And so, and I think the sun is so gorgeous out here. We'll do it outside. No, 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 the whole pre is it's, too. It's <laughs> All right, Scott, tell me what's going on. Tell oh. me what's happening. It's always a, like, do I suit up or do I not suit up? So I'm suiting up. So it's just nicer to, to be able to do the grimiest, nastiest of things. Take the suit off and go out to dinner. <laughs> Okay, basically this is the final production version of the 410S ICS Christ machine. And it is the only machine in the world that will go to 232 PSI and has particle control. So it is a monster and what you brought me is a perfect replica. See, I, I bring representation you, of what this thing will do. I bring you perfection. Uh, always. You know, I, but I highly suggest we take the transmission out of the back of the Prius before I do it. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, dry ice cleaning is one of the ways you can get anything really, really clean, like on a molecular level. So essentially what this machine does is it feeds a mixture of dry ice and high pressure air and it hits the, uh, it, it, does, it does a few things, right? So Three things. Three things. Yes, it's super simple really. There's kinetic energy just from the pellet hitting just like any other media blasting. So there's some kinetic value in that regard. Then there's the actual particle being 108 degrees negative Fahrenheit. So it's super cold and we know that cold makes things shrink mm -hmm. uh, so that helps so the thing that you're trying to remove from the surface loses some adhesion so it can't stick anymore and the third thing happens is when that actually sublimates it doesn't melt but on impact it sublimates to a gas from a solid to a gas that is an 800 times the size expansion so it's like a miniature bomb mm -hmm. times millions of particles yeah. at the same time so it's really, those three things are the primary elements. And then the voluminous air, you know, 180 CFM air that we're using, blows those micro particles everywhere. Because everybody says, where does the dirt go? Mm -hmm. Well, it goes everywhere in super small particles. Yeah. So that's why you'll see, there'll be a cloud out here today. Yeah. And uh, he's worked with the manufacturer to make this as good as possible. Uh, this is a newer version. Um, I guess this is the production version. Right? It is, the yes. Senior? Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be something. Also, uh, if I didn't mention, Scott makes his own dry ice, which is which is nuts. I don't even know how you do that. I don't know. Is it is there like a dry ice tree or is it like how, how is it? No. Yeah. It's a, it, so CO two exists in three forms: liquid CO two, dry ice, and then once we use it, it turns into a gas. So those are the three forms. So we take the liquid CO two in that tank over there. And as soon as it becomes in an ambient, non-pressurized state, it automatically turns into dry ice. And so that's the form that we use it, but it's powder. It's not, it's not dense enough. So the machine compacts the dry ice into pellets and it looks like a pasta machine, basically. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a little spaghetti, but uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, these guys right here. All right, ears, you guys, you know where the ear protection is, you're yeah, gonna need it. Let's put on some ears and, uh, and, and protect ourselves and, and yeah. take that transmission out of the freezer.
you know what's the end result that you're looking for but a combination of osfo and steel wool and multiple versions of dry ice mm -hmm. you can just keep refining it and get rid of a lot of that staining if you wanted to like if you want to just bring this back to like as close to stock as you can well you, so, you can so, go that far so what i what i see here is uh you save the sticker yeah it says use dextron 3 atf only transmission's all intact it's uh it's not, uh, you know, melted in any uh, significant way, so I'm super happy. And, like, is there anything that dry ice is, like, really bad on? Like, it'll just destroy? Foam. Foam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you saw, I, just for fun, I just exposed, I got rid of the insulation off the stainless. I mean, obviously. Yeah, we did an insulation delete, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, if I wanted to not do that, it's easy enough to do. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, foam is the big thing, and, of course, if you don't understand how to use the machines, you can ruin any finish. Yeah. Bare aluminum, you can just go to town on. It's, okay. That's the beauty in being able to do cast or, or bare aluminum. But I'll, I'll get a few more angles here on the side, then we'll flip it. And we'll do cool. Some. So is it still as satisfying as yeah. when you first started? Yeah. Good. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I have friends like, I don't get it. Why are you? Like, remember, you're talking to the guy that laid underneath the 100 Humvees and got them ready to go to sell. Yeah, there you, you know, go. It's like, why did you hire someone to do that? I said, well, we're all wired different, you know? <laughs> and, you know, for me, it just makes it easy to help people once they buy the machine, how to run it and use it. How to, you know, I'm not aware of any other entity that's selling machines where they actually use the machines every day. Yeah. And that's an advantage that's obviously... I'm not only the president of the company, I'm yeah, also a I customer. Mean, it's just, it just yeah. is so much easier to talk to someone when they have trouble, they don't understand why something's not working right, if, if you're actually the person mm -hmm. that either designed the process or designed the machine or was collaboratively involved. Yeah. You know, it's just a whole lot easier to get them to resolution where they're satisfied and happy. And yeah. so when we hear someone else bought another machine, I'm like, nah, we'll probably get a shot at them later. So, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Scott also has a, a sort of support group uh, for people that uh, buy machines and want to start their own businesses and they have questions and uh, th there's a frequently asked questions, there's a uh, group that you can uh, join that has Scott and like you, you do like uh, weekly or bi-weekly or something like that. Yeah, uh, we do yeah. weekly, we have Zoom calls, we have like 400 hours of recorded Zoom calls and we have a, a closed community for support. And you know, we get criticized by some, like, oh, he charges for information. I'm like, well, we all do at some level. There's, exactly. <laughs> it's the only way we can actually support people to the level that they need it. Mm -hmm. If you're just going to give free advice all day long, well, that's, you know. I feel attacked now. Yeah, well, I, I mean, attacked. you've got it dialed in, but there's, like, <laughs> certain NBA stars that do really well, but there's a whole lot of basketball players. We're just basketball that, players. You're okay. the NBA star. Right. Uh, and, and the reason why, I know this is getting a little bit geeky, but the reason why... Um, you know, people pay to be uh, part of the support group and, uh, you know, earn, um, you know, a living doing this is because this stuff is actually really expensive to do. Uh, if you wanted to go out and get this done, uh, like a professional shop would be like between $200 and $300 per hour to get this done because the equipment is very bespoke uh, to actually have the stuff on hand, the dry ice, uh, that it, it doesn't just last forever. So there is, you know, there's a lot of expertise. You have to know not to go, you know, past certain points and uh, know, you know, how to um, preserve the uh, whatever you're, whatever it is you're blasting. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. So um, you could earn a really good living, and uh, this is the guy to go to. Yeah, we're having help. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. We got 70 guys in the group and a few gals, and that's uh, that's, that's rewarding. So let's let's do some more. Let's do more it. blasting, less talking. Let's do it. That's typically what people say.
out of control. It's so dry, the static electricity is like crazy high. Is it zapping you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you go for it. I'm good. That is awesome, man. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, this might this might have a life yet. Oh, I think so. Oh, look at that! I don't even think it was it was moving all that well before. So, if you were to go to Aston Martin and uh, get this done, this transmission would cost something like ten thousand dollars. I'm selling it for a lot less than that. Uh, it's already sold, so uh, don't DM me. But yeah, it's uh, it's even like that uh, that person might have gotten a deal on this. Oh, that's interesting. We that bushing's loose. Yeah, yeah, the bushing's loose. Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah, it goes in the gears. Nice. What are you controlling on the handle? Are you controlling anything with your that gun? No. With just your setup. Pull the, the trigger. Yeah. Pull the trigger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the control on the gun systems because. It's complicated. It involves computers, firmware, software, motherboards, and switches. Like the switch on my other machine from another brand I won't mention failed. It's like the little push button thing you have on your microwave. You know, doo -doo 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 -doo. It's like a $5 part, but they want me to buy an $1,100 gun to replace it. So if you look at this gun, it's just very simple. I use the analogy all the time. The way we design the machines is like a circular saw. You want to raise the blade on your saw, you want a computer or motherboard, circuits, and hardware to push a button to raise the blade. No, you just reach down there and turn the wheel. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. kind of physically demanding work anyway. Yeah. You don't mind that's that's true. Moving a knob. Scott, you have you have outdone yourself, my friend. This uh, this looks like a very good, decent transmission. It looks honest. No, thank you so much, man. You you're, uh, you're yeah. always a lifesaver, and uh, the transformation on this has been has been quite substantial. But uh, you have you have some cool stuff in your yeah, garage, some right? Yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. Can we go? Some new yeah. Just come in for a tour. tour. Yeah.